Behind me here sits a 1986 Chevrolet S10, getting up there towards the end of the years for the square body, you know. This one sat on a farm next to a field for 16 years, give or take a million. And in the previous one or two or four episodes, got her running a little bit, kinda. This one, I'm gonna fix the brakes about 20% gooderish. I got some tires and wheels for it. And I almost just said, look it over bumper to bumper, but she's only got one up front. And then I'm gonna attempt to drive it 500 miles from Eastern Minnesota to Northwestern North Dakota and give it to my brother because I don't want it. This is gonna be fine. I think, I think I'll make it there. Not, no, <laughs> not even close. I already started in on the stop laters, got all the yelling and grunting out of the way, but I'll get you in there and show you where I'm at. And then I think we'll get in here because, you know, there's some bearings in there and some other stuff. We'll take a look at those. We're going to ignore the frame chunks and body mounts that just keep falling off. These Hoosiers are great, but I do have a new set of tires and wheels. And I think you're going to like on them. And I do have a bumper, came in the back of the truck, I think it's the one for this anyway. I took the gas axe and, you know, made some provisions in here. So we're going to flop that bumper onto this thing. That way the license plate that doesn't belong to me has somewhere to hang out in there, you know. So like I was saying, started in on the brakes and basically got the line off from here to here. She went over to there, all of this cruddy stuff. These fittings were not coming out, but the whole reason for that was this line at the top was leaking pretty, pretty severely, might I add. So I wanted to change just the soft line, but you know, everything just twists off. And this is why I tell you guys out in the field, I get asked a lot, why don't you try to change, you know, the wheel cylinders real quick? Well, because they just, they twist off. It doesn't matter how much juice or heat you give them. You got about... 3.97 repeating percent chance getting this stuff off without breaking it but with the impact getter out 6,000 I was able to get the fittings out of the wheel cylinders that are in here and this is snapped so I think I'm going to come back to here where there's some good brake line that's leaking apparently that's fine maybe back here then and put in this super cheap make your own copper bendy flexo light 200 stuff up to a soft line. I got a new one somewhere. Here it is, right there. And then we'll do the same for, you know, this thing over to that stuff. I'll just take this here and we'll bend some stuff up like that. And maybe at that point, it might kind of sort of stop. I'm hoping that the front works. I have no idea, because when I hit the brake, the juice would just come out. And the other downside is, I don't think I will ever get anything into this bleeder, so I'm gonna have to bleed it off this fitting, which means I can't use the Juice Succulator 300. That's a shame. This is bad. We're gonna also ignore that and hope that it makes it 500 miles. Nope, not even close. No exhaust, well I mean there was. That looks pretty good. It's too bad this is Wi-Fi, otherwise I'd be able to hear this rumble. Maybe I take this out so it doesn't swing. Nope, gonna leave it there. And then these shocks, you know, if we have time, I'm gonna fix these a little bit later. You know what, why don't I just fix these now? They're right here in my teeth. That's fixed. And remember fellas, you always wanna replace these in pairs, otherwise you're gonna put unwanted stress on your bad one. So make sure you do both at the same time, then we're good to go. Now we'll move on to snipping this line off I have a little mini uh, tubing slicer upper thingamajigger. We'll get that in here and hopefully that's the brake. Otherwise we're going to get some gas and stuff like that. And this wiring also doesn't work. I have no tail lips. But that's what they make magnetized towing lights for. We might have to get into them. I'm assuming it might be a bad ground right here. 
because the frame really doesn't have any metallic properties left. That's okay. And maybe we'll just run a wire from here all the way up to the battery. See what happens first. Could be the lights. Nope, they're fine. It's definitely wiring. What was I doing? Oh, we need to cut stuff. And then we'll get this all mounted up first. There's a bolt that goes in here. And then we'll spend half the day putting these lines in only to know that these wheel cylinders are leaking and I have to take all that apart anyway. And I don't have those, so I am prepared. What kind of a nest is that? What in the devil? Bruce Lee, the line off. Got some juice out of her. I guess that means the master cylinder might not be on vacation, which is great. Since I've put more brake fittings on than the owner of Callahan Auto Parts, figured I'd shoot some tips at your teeth and you can pick them up or put them down if you want. Remember, always do your best flare without the fitting on and then cut it off and then remember to put the fitting on and do your second one. This is the cheapest tool that I could find. Comes in a little tray thing. I believe it's from O'Reilly. This works just fine, fellas. You don't gotta go out and spend big bucks on anything. I like this one with the bolt later on it. Avoid the one with the wing nut. You just can't get the bite that a guy wants. This is that disc inside tube later shaper upper 100. That's the most important part. You gotta make sure that that comes flush when you draw her in. If she gets kitty wampus on you, then you're not gonna get a good fitting in your state of the union here. So be careful with that. I like to use a never come off 200. And that's because the first 1.6 millimeters is the most important. And if you're flopping this around with a socket or an open end, that could start doing this. With this, you just give it. And then it's, you know, it's in there. And then we'll back this off, just run the tip in. I always run double flares. There are people out there that are doing single flares. Just remember that it's not 1968 and you can do a double flare. It's an option. So I'm gonna finish this up quick. And then I got this one already here. So I'm just gonna stab that through here. Or maybe I'll wrap it around this or something. I'm not sure, whatever is the easiest. Get this all tightened up and then we'll get down there and start on the backside. Sure, that's all done. I did get her jammed up through there. So she's poking out the back here now. Got this just kind of roughed in. She wobbles around a little bit and that'll help us get the fittings in and whatnot. So now, just gonna eyeball this, probably cut her right here so I can get some sort of, you know, band on her. And then, already comes with the fitting, see? Put another flare, juice that into that, and then we can start running these and see if they are gonna hold any pressure. Probably not, wasting time. Gonna do it anyway. Uglier than a geo prism, but they're in there, you know. And that's the benefit of these kind of copperish bendy flexo lights is you can just work a man kind of wherever you want. No idea if this is gonna work, of course. I did hook my peepers into the differential since I was here, and surprisingly there's some oil in it. It's bad. So I'm gonna pretend I didn't check. Did end up dropping the muffler out. It's in great shape, so I'm gonna put that on the shelf because I ended up just needing to sawzall that little mount there and you know it fell. I don't know if you can tell. I'm gonna bring this down, throw some juice in her, and then I'm gonna pump on it a couple times. If I get enough kickback, we'll come back here and do the right thing and bleed them off using the line instead of the wheel cylinders because they're definitely not gonna work. About a 2% chance they hold pressure, but what's gonna happen most likely is the seals are gonna blow out on the inside there and they're just gonna leak off. Then I got two options, replace them, which is, you know, not likely. The other is I'll take a vice grip and just pinch off the rear line under here. 
These are disc later brakes. These normally don't go bad. They do have a soft line that sometimes gets rotten and it'll let fluid through, but not back. So these end up sticking, but we're getting the eggs before the cart here. Let's just bring her down, get some juice in it and see what happens. Well, as you can see, this side's drier than a mummy's esophagus. And this side looks like maple syrup. And that's fine, we're gonna leave that. There was a bunch of sludge in there I've been wiping out for about 13 months. I figured why shoot that down to the already bad wheel cylinders? Let's give them a break. If a feller finds himself in this situation, you're probably going to have no pedal. You might have to bleed the master cylinder again. And I like to do that just by holding my thumb over this. Take this off, get it out of there. Hold your thumb over it, have someone push the pedal and just crack your thumb until you get pressure. And I mean, it's just going to shoot. And then if you've got disc drum or disc disc, you're also going to have a proportioning valve like this. And GM has his reset button on the front. Guy might have to press that so you can get fluid to both ends of the party. But I'm just gonna throw some in there, start jamming on the pedal and see what happens and try to do the least amount of work as possible. It's the day next after last. And I actually got my 10 year old with me, Bradley, and he's gonna be helping me out today. And we already finished bleeding the brakes today. Yes. And uh, he's pretty good at that, topped her all off for me. And then I started tinkering around with the headlights while she warmed up in here. And that ended up just being a corroded connector here and my switch inside was corroded as well and that's actually really easy to test on these older rigs i just take one of these here test lights get you a good bond to ground and you know you know make sure you test the thing out like that's there you go oh maybe i don't know it was on there it is jam that in your connector flip your switch on if you don't have power then start working backwards while well, i clean this connector clean the bulkhead connector Pop the switch out and sure enough, we had some like sulfurage stuff in there, emery cloth those, and now we got both headlights, didn't have to fix either one. And then in here I started gathering around and this is, there's something wrong with that. I got an inside Audi Lucy belt, so I'm going to have to fix this. Looks like it's shredded in half. I don't know where the other half is and then flipped inside out. So Bradley's going to fix that. And then I started looking at the wiring and the mice have just been into all the vacuum hoses. A lot of the wires, in fact, I already fixed one of these wire coming off the ignition coil. Being it runs, I'm going to guess that that white wire is the tack signal, but I did repair it because I don't know if that goes to some sort of ECM, TCM, BCM, RCM, HAM thing, module, controller upper. Because remember, this has got the digitals on it. So I don't know if it takes a tack signal or not. I'm not going to look it up. So I just, boop, fix that quick. And then I'm going to start capping stuff off. The, this one here and one behind here comes over to here. And then down to the old vacuum juggulator. And that stuff is just completely rotted. So we're going to take all that off. Plug all that up. I got a little bit of a weird idle situation. Most likely still just a dirty injector. Haven't run it much at all, but I'm gonna put about hmm, 12, 13 gallons of barium in the tank. And of course we already gave her the Italian tune up here, but get all the vacuum leaks fixed and then maybe she'll idle, right? But we'll jump in and have Brad get this belt taken care of. I'll plug all this stuff off really quick. And then we got some other things to do. We still got tires, wheels, bearings and I picked up some weather stripping right there so we're going to go ahead and you know because this is probably good enough guy could tape this up you know but I spent the $42 and got the kit that's just a general GM kit it's nice about GM is they have all the same channel weather stripping so it just doesn't matter so this top one's your tensioner that's how you stretch it tight and then this one's your mount belt. Jiggle, jiggle, shake, push. 14 M&Ms! I don't know why you're taking so long. Oh, I'll get a 15, I guess. Wow! Help me understand this one. <laughs> what else we got hooked on then? Yep. Yep. 
There you go. So we got the belt on. I think Bradley's got everything plugged up. We rejuiced all the linkages. Ran some electro digital tape over some bare wires over there. I even picked up a fuel filter today, which is conveniently located right next to the exhaust manifold. I squirted her down with some get off juice. If I can get these to spin without twisting the line, we'll go ahead and replace that. But if that starts bending the fuel line, we're just going to pretend we couldn't find the fuel filter and just leave that one in there. I also rerouted the O2 connection because that was laying on the manifold, which by the way, these look like headers almost. That's pretty nice. This looks like it was replaced at some point. That's way too shiny to be in here. I did order a blower motor because this one makes just a noise like you wouldn't believe. It's like sickle guards down a fence post. It's just a weird sound. I was able to get that little bugger in there. Of course, the top one wouldn't spin, but luckily the bottom one came loose. So I just put a 5 8 on the top fitting and spun the whole filter off. A little trick, if you can get one fitting off, just stick a socket wrench on there and they'll come out. And then the return line was rubbing into the old steer later, go left, go right selector bar here. So I just kind of bent them back all the way. And we're going to pressure test it, see if it leaks. Go ahead and turn the key. You'll probably hear it priming. I think we're going to be just fine, so I'll throw the air filtration system back on this. And don't forget to plug in the Wijimawoo down here in the old stabilators, because they do something. But I think this is, we're just going to call that done. Shut it for now. We're going to move on to the weather stripping and all that stuff over there now. Wanted to show you guys this really quick. I'm really glad that I decided to throw a filter in here. If you remember in the previous videos, I jammed a vacuum in here and in here, shook it around and did all that stuff, but apparently there was a clump hiding in there. And luckily the filter caught it. And I don't know where it was in here, but I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful in the future. Make sure I pay a little bit more attention. But I mean, if you want to, probably running some air, air hose through there or something, blow it out would probably help. These little iron dukes, it would chew on that real easy. Bradley's starting to put in the weather strapping on this side. Of course, two are missing, one was stripped, the other three just ripped out of the floor. We'll put it in with some tape or something. What he is going to vacuum this up and I got to poking around because that smell is just not going away in here. Somehow I forgot this, and that could be the issue, not positive, but I'm going to get that out and I'm excited because it looks like the original owner's manual and some other goodies in there. Okay, hit me. Well, that was one of the worst glove boxes I've been in in a while. Of course, I disinfected there with the old brake clean and we got some sort of congealed juice going on back there. And that's why I call it the mouse sucker. I saw two go in and I felt the daddy. I mean, it was like, Ugh. you just felt the rib cage going down the whole pipe there. But we got options here now. Pretty much nothing. There's the 373 rear though. That's pretty nifty, 2.5 litre. Of course, the four speed, nothing else. AM radio, basic solid colored truck, no options, no tilt, nothing fancy. But we're going to close this, pretend like we just never went through any of that there. It used to be a badge here, EFI or something, can't remember. Anyway, we got really sidetracked. We're going to pull out one of these pieces, see if we can get this stuck back on, and then we might just ignore the bottom, but we'll see what happens. Well, it's in. And it looks awesome and it fit really good actually and this is what i meant by it's fairly universal if it has the same channel type this is the extra length we cut off so this same package probably fits 102 different doors and every now and then guy wants to put in just a touch of glue but the secret there my friends is get the right glue and you could tell because it says weather strip on it and instead of putting it on your fresh paint, which is typically the case when you're replacing this stuff, it gets really stringy and then you got strings and goop and you're trying to get it off. Run it right into the channel and then you can wipe the tip off inside the channel and then just press it down 
onto your vehicle like that. It's significantly easier. The brand of this, and they're not a sponsor or anything like that. I just, I always want to try to save you guys money or get you good products. It's called Precision. I think that's the part number, DWP11082, but be careful because only in California, this here gives you cancer. But so does that shovel. So, I mean, it's up to you if you want to use it or not. That side's already done as well. We're going to move on to tires and wheels. While I'm in here, a couple things the guys got to do. We should definitely take care of the brakes and then we'll check the bearings. I like to just use brake rejuvenation spray. This is going to bring everything right back around. Good as new. Now we'll take a look at the bearings. Them are probably plenty fine. Let me go get the tires. For tires and wheels, guy just had to go with my favorite combination, which is the old white spoke and the white letter. These are the Galaxy R1s. You've probably seen them 19 times on the channel now. The reason I keep buying them is not necessarily because they last, because honestly, I don't know. But they are the cheapest when you sort price plus shipping first on Evil Bay. I also picked up some Krager center caps. Glad they fit. And then chrome lug nuts by Dorman. Them are the cheapest as well. There we go. Well, as expected, these look great. I even got back in here first and, you know, clean the frame up. But they don't rub any of the hardware or the steering stuff or any of that important things. I did stay on the 14, so these are 235, 60, 14, so I was a little bit nervous on the front because of the back spacing, but they fit great. I wanted to go with just a little bit wider of a tire, kind of fill that wheel well a little bit. And she'll sink down just a hair more once we get her on the ground, but I like to look quite a bit. In fact, so much, I think I'm going to get in here and rejuvenate on this paint a little bit. Do some paint correction and keep in mind we got a little bit of bondo up here and we got just a skosh of surface rust down here it's bubbling but i'm going to show you guys for four five bucks maybe you can clean all this paint up in a hurry so you've seen this in some of my previous videos paint correction and whatnot normally i'd get in here with some 80 grit and just knock some of this stuff down but this is slightly advanced so instead of 80 grit, I'm gonna go with one grit. Make sure to keep it flat. You don't wanna create any low spots. There we go. Oh yeah. Perfect. For paint, I'm going with Duplicolor acrylic enamel, multi-purpose. She'll go down on anything. And just ease it in here, a couple layers. This is gonna look brand new. We licensed her up and got the bumper put on good. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'd take it to town. Let's scoot it outside and hook our peepers around it and see what she looks like now. Denied bank loan. Guy's plan today was just show up at the shop, 
switch trucks, jump in the S10, fly to the house, pack the bag, you know, get the sock, toothbrush, and the whaling. Hit the road early, early in the morning. But on the way here, a friend called and said, hey, I found the rear wheel cylinders for that S10. Dang it. So here I am. You know me, a little bit of pedals is just good enough, but if I'm giving this to my brother, he's got some youngins that got permits now, you know. So I don't want them jumping in this unless it's got decent-ish brakes. And these are usually pretty easy to change out, and this is the reason I'm doing it. Number one, I couldn't even crack the bleeder, so I couldn't properly bleed them. I was bleeding them at the line. And number two, I knew they were going to be completely just rotted like that. So these were probably doing nothing or just filling full of air. The new style, this one's already in. They're a little bit different to put in. And they look like this. And normally you have a bolt or two that kind of holds this to the, you know, the inside plater housing drum rotator assembly 200. But this doesn't, it has this little pressure springy clip mabobber that kind of goes over here and presses into place. The problem is when it's on the truck, this gets so rotted in here, I had to really just dig in there. What ended up doing it was the old Harbor Freight screwdriver. Popped them out. And then of course I soaked her down with the brake rejuvenation spray. So the shoes are just, you could see I added at least a quarter inch on them. Now that I got this up in a guy's teeth, I think I should probably fix that. I mean, it's, it's fairly bad. So I'm just going to do it the right way. So thank you to whoever sent this brand new, never used nostalgic plate. It's now part of the S10 and might I say fits excellent. Here's the real test. Can't even tell. I guess I'll see you in the morning when everything's packed up. Just going to put the trusty tote in here. My little Harbor Freight tool case that I take everywhere. Some warm clothes because I'm going to be walking. And we're just, you know, going to put her on the interstate, I guess. See what happens. Good morning. Nope. It's afternoon. Here's why. I took a gamble. Ordered a blower fan yesterday because heat would be nice. And this particular store said, yeah, she'll be in afternoon. It's here it is. Nope. Not even remotely close. I mean, it's for a D10 bulldozer. There is literally nothing similar in shape, size, or function. So that's great. So today is going to be all day without heat. And I Google machined it and turns out it's 600 miles. It's like 589 miles. Not 500, so that's even better. So I'm going to try to get to Fiergo, North Dakota probably shut her down there grab something to eat i think the restaurants are still open and whatnot there that would be nice and then the next day we'll kind of mosey the rest of the way i'm gonna go put gas in this for the first time and see if the gas gauge works Let's go find the intro. 
retro state. Why is that mirror folded in like that? One thing I forgot about that I'm just now remembering, mainly because I'm woozy and sick to my stomach, is the exhaust is cut off right there. And it seems to just be, you know, it's getting up in here. Whoa. This steering is, I like it. It just keeps you on your toes a little bit. The great news is my son already blew all the cobwebs out of this Iron Duke, you know. So today it just is what it is. We'll just stick her on the interstate and just start a scoop. That is a big snow machine, my goodness. The exhaust is at the perfect pitch in here. It's making my brain tingle on the inside. You can sure tell it has 373s. Fourth gear, 60. I mean, it's, it's singing. But this is probably where I'm going to run it for a bit. The steering is just, I got to get used to it a little bit more. But I mean, it rides smooth. I don't hear any weird noises yet, other than parts of the body and frame falling off. thing is the clutch. There's still fluid in the reservoir. Come on. Let's go. Let's go now. Oh, 
stopped again. The steering funny. Lost a brand new tire. And as you can hear, it's not running very good either. Being I'm so close to town, I think I'm just gonna get a tow uh, to the motel, try to figure it out again. And probably just see if we can keep going, if I can figure out what this engine issue is, and also the clutch and the tire. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. And then we'll just go from there. Good morning. 72 niner, early million o'clock. Negative two without the wind chill, which in 44 other states is also known as death. Really missed the North Dakota weather. Nope, not even remotely. So here it sits, didn't get stolen, left the key in it. That's too bad. So we've got an engine issue, power. She just didn't have it. Somehow the clutch pedal doesn't work again. And then the tire went flat, all within 42 seconds. That's fine. I'm in Fargo. I think I'm not even halfway yet. So, not quite sure where to start. I think we should just make it run again. Then we won't fix the clutch, probably. And last, and definitely least, is the tire. I have a spare, but it's more rotten than that tomato movie. So I'm not quite sure what to do there. Might just have to buy a new one. Guy got to thinking about this tire here and what probably happened when I was scooting down the shoulder there, I must have picked up something in the tire, although I haven't seen it yet. And then I drove on the sidewall a smidge, you know, so now that's, she's a little shot. But I do have a spare. I mean, we could maybe crawl on this, like I was saying. But she's pretty rotten. I've driven on worse though. Look at the tread on it though. Not quite sure how, but this snapped out. And then I also found the wrapper to the belt. No idea why it's in there. Put it back. Let's see how it did on oil. Look at that. Did not burn a single drop. That's pretty awesome. So a guy did get to thinking about it, and remember how I said I don't want to run it down to about a quarter of a tank because there's probably a bunch of junk in the fuel tank, and then we'd just suck that up. Well, what I did then is immediately ran it to a quarter tank, and I think I sucked a bunch of stuff up out of the fuel tank. And I did put a new filter in here, which is probably all full of crud now. Luckily, I have a fuel filter wrench, and uh, basically you get in here and you can fix them like this. So basically what that does, it's gonna bring that filter back around to new. So I'm gonna jump in and just see if it starts this morning. Luckily, probably not. The other thing a guy wants to do here is to shake the truck for a while. And there's a pickup screen in there. Some people call them a sock. I don't know. It's just, there's a thing, filter shake it like this sometimes you can just clean them off and then they'll pick more fuel up you know i don't know let's see what happens it doesn't help that it's so cold clutch doesn't do anything but i do need the safety switch on her So with this clutch, the only thing I could figure is there's air in the system again. 
I mean, because the pedal is spongy and it doesn't want to shift in the gear just like it was when we got it, but everything's new. The master, the slave cylinder, the lines, we bled it and bled it and bled it. And all them fittings are over torqued, I guarantee you that. So I'm not sure there's air in the line unless something is physically going wrong with the clutch now or the clutch fork. But what I'm thinking is, let's forget about it. I'm going to get this tire fixed and I think a guy could just start it in gear. And I've only got 14 stop signs to get through before the interstate. Once you're on the interstate, you don't need a clutch. We just go. And then we'll see if the engine actually did self-heal or if we're just going to be stuck on the side of the ditch again. Great. So I'm going to get that tire off because it is not getting any warmer. And then whilst I'm doing that, I need to figure out how to get the tire to the tire shop. Hmm. This could get interesting. So there goes my Uber, and uh, he looked at me a little bit weird when I said, hey, uh, can I throw my tire in your trunk? But he was a nice guy. So we made it down to, I guess it's called Tuffy, yeah, and we'll see if we can find another tire for this guy. Well, these guys were able to find a tire, a little bit tricky with them, 14. Got another Uber on the way, Chevy pickup, crew cab flavor. Pretty fancy rake to be doing the Uberage. He should be here in a couple minutes and then get this tire back on quick. But I just remembered I don't have headlights. They kind of just go on and off and one works sometimes. And so that's a thing. We're gonna be fighting the dark now as well, but we'll see what happens. The good news is it's a balmy six out now. That's nice. You know a good place to get a cheeseburger around here and maybe a wobble pop or two? Good cheeseburger. Yeah, something, you know, some real meat, like hand patted. 48 days later, but I do now have a Snoop and Cooper Cabra, Georgia, Tennessee edition. And now on tires and wheels, I've exceeded the value of this pickup by 317%. So that's great. Let's get this on. Whoa. E-O-double-G. Snoop Dogg. fuel filter wrench really came through for me once again. I think I'm going to stop in Bismarck, which is on the way. My grandma lives there and my aunt. And uh, you got to make time for family, you know. Swing through there, say hi to those folks if we can get that far. 190 miles, I think, something like that. Basically, we're going to start it in first gear and i'm going to try to take this back road and that way i cut out a bunch of these red lights and i think i've only got two stop signs which i'll just you know i'll just scoot through them between you and i and the fence post and then one red light where i'll have to start it in gear again and then we're on the freeway so i can just grind them and get them can't find them grind them not there make it i'm not sure we're just you know boom we're doing that thing here we go Oh, this is going to be... Uh-oh. What is happening? Shh. Start. There we go. The snow actually helps because the tire is just spinning. Get second gear. Oh. Yeah. Got her. She's really good in the snow.
then I'll bring her all the way up. Seems to be running 93.66% good. I'm going to take the next right up here and get some fuel to top this thing off. It must have just sucked up some crud in that filter or the fuel gauge is a little bit off. You can kind of hear it changing tone. That or I'm going deaf. Probably just deaf. I'm going to ignore it. I forgot to get earplugs. Dang it. I'm also glad that I ended up with the right size tire. If you ever have to get a different size tire in an emergency, throw them on the front because you don't want your rear differential spinning at different speeds. At least in a two-wheel drive pickup, you can throw them up front. She'll handle a little goofy, but this one already does. It's like the old movies. if it doesn't start again you know then that's a big ordeal and there come the cops and another tow bill and get there and everything's fine oh don't you dare i am speeding but i'm gonna have to uh, i got one more left turn and then uh Just left the family's place. That was a really good time. Glad we stopped in. And I needed to figure out the lights real quick. And you can do that in any rig. Just get rid of the light switch altogether and hot wire it up and she'll come back around. Just unhooked the switch and just jumpered them. So this is tails there and then headlights here. And I think I might even have, I do, I got stop laters. So I mean, this is legal as she gets now downright going the town rig that's plenty fine long as this one doesn't fall out she used to hang out like that but i guess we're good to go i think i got everything squared away pumping the clutch still nothing well let's hit the road i got about three hours left and i think we'll be there picked up this heater here jeff gave that to me and uh, this will keep me alive, I think. That's nice. Anything else? No? Let's just go. Heading back. 
back to what used to be home Passing by those little towns I know so well Stopping for gas and then I'm behind the wheel again Driving this like a spiritual cleanse Where every mile is a new beginning And every friend holds a new end Eyes on the road, don't lose control I'm speeding fast to chase my soul I'm driving For the sky, I had it all but lost and fell back down again. Spent my time playing the game where every single day was a losing battle and every drink was a dead end. Eyes on the goal, don't lose control. I'm living fast, I've lost my soul, I'm driving. Emotions high and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting Another day million early New Year's Day actually got into the farm late last night I ended up stopping there saved me a few miles and there were some folks coming over to the farm there for New Year's so snipped in and let the mullet down you know this morning I got it back over to my brother's house sitting here and uh, you probably recognize this truck as well sitting back here and there's a lot of comments on that video. How come we didn't get a reaction from your brother? And I tried explaining that, you know, you're not really going to get a lot of reaction out of us, but we'll do that this morning. When he scoots out of the house here, we'll throw him the keys and see what he says or doesn't say. More like it. Other than that pesky clutch issue, truck did fine handled great went down the road fine the cooper cabra hung in there of course that's a way better snow pattern these are like rain summer tires but it is what it is this heater kept me alive so that was nice you might also be wondering how comes he ended up with two trucks here I actually started filming this in August and lost some footage and was able to get it recovered. So it's taken several months to kind of wrap this up. But in the meantime, I found this truck and, and we did that quick little $119 paint job on her. And I knew that this would be a good truck for my brother. It used to be his truck, he gave that to his boy. So, you know, he's into the shelves as well. But this one here, like I was saying, going to be his commuter rig. I got really good fuel mileage in it. All right, so you're asking me why did I drive this thing up here? And I'm actually just going to I'm just going to leave it with you and give it to you. So it's yours now. Truck here. What do you think of the makeover on her? Well, there you have it. Basically, I think he's liking them. Another successful road trip, 1986 S10. Sat abandoned next to a field for almost two decades. Almost 600 miles. We had, you know, there were some bumps, but the old girl made it. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate it very much. And until next time, keep her greasy side down. <laughs>